the most incredible dessert with only five ingredients coming right up. Hey, Chef Des coming at you, corporate chef of BC Egg. We're here to make, you got it, classic creme brulee. Now I know it sounds all fancy and everything, but it's really not that difficult. Actually, it's only four ingredients you'll find on the website at bcegg.com. I throw in a fifth one, just a little bit of salt, just to give it some extra flavor and make it more balanced. The first thing I want you to do is to get a kettle going and get some water. We don't want boiling water when we're gonna fill the bain-marie for the ramekins, but we want it really, really hot. So we'll let that boil, we'll let that sit. Now on the recipe you're gonna find at bcegg.com, this recipe makes four half cup portions. So you're gonna use half cup ramekins. I like mine a little bigger, so I'm using one cup ramekins. So I'm gonna show you two ways how to make this using the exact same recipe. All we're doing is timesing that recipe by one and a half and doing one cup ramekins. For the recipe for four servings at a half a cup each, you're gonna find on the website, you use four BC eggs. For the ones I'm doing now, for the one cup ramekins, I'm using six BC eggs. We're gonna put them in a container, a baking dish, where there's enough room for them to sit. You always wanna cook custards in a bain-marie atmosphere. That means having the hot water all the way around them so the custards cook really evenly. I have my oven, because this is only four portions, I can fit it in my toaster oven. So I have it preheated at 325 degrees. I have my ramekins ready to go. And you're not doing anything to ramekins. There's no preparation required. You don't butter them, you don't have to do anything. Just put them in there. Make sure that they're oven safe ramekins. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is get some full fat whipping cream. So this is 33 to 35% milk fat whipping cream. Yes, it's not a diet dessert for sure, but it's well worth it for a splurge. We're gonna take that cream on the stove top and medium high, but it's only gonna be on there for a short time. Then we wanna crack our yolks. We wanna separate our egg whites from our egg yolks. And we want the egg yolks in the bowl. I'm gonna show you an easy way to separate your egg whites from your egg yolks. Just run them in your fingers like that and the egg whites, when they're really fresh, you'll, you'll see that they're really thick like that. But you'll get your egg yolk and you just pop the egg yolk in the bowl. I'm actually gonna save those egg whites for my wife. She wants to make some meringues. So again, just do all these until I have all six yolks in the mixing bowl. We have all six of our egg yolks. All right, my water's boiling, so I'm just gonna shut that off, let that sit in the kettle. All right, so we're gonna take our six egg yolks, and in here I have six tablespoons of sugar. The recipe online, it's only four tablespoons, so you're using a tablespoon for every egg yolk. Here's my addition. I'm putting a little bit of salt. I'm using a quarter teaspoon of salt for these big portions, and I would use just under an eighth of a teaspoon, just a pinch if you're following the recipe online to the tea. Whip them together until they look pale yellow. What this does, this is really important. This creates a really nice smooth texture. If you're creating something like a creme caramel where you have to unmold the custards from the ramekin and put them on a plate and you want them to stand on their own, then you don't wanna whip your eggs too much and that will create a firmer texture in your custard. By whipping your egg yolks with your sugar until they become really, really whipped, about one to two minutes, okay? So you have that nice pale yellow. It's gonna create a lot softer, more velvety texture in your custard. And that's gonna be perfect. So we're gonna serve it right in the ramekin. It doesn't have to be unmolded from the ramekin. And you want people to just to taste that beautiful, luscious texture of the custard. You could do this in the stand mixture if you wanted to, but it's only a minute or two. Look at that, beautiful. We're gonna have a look at our cream. So what you wanna look for for your cream is you wanna see just a few bubbles coming up around the edges. You'll see some steam coming off there. So we're almost there. We wanna make sure that your cream is not boiling. We're not looking for that. If you use boiling cream, a lot greater chance of you curdling these egg yolks. We don't wanna do that. We wanna cook these very slowly. We're gonna temper them. What I'm using here is a damp dishcloth. So I could put my bowl on here and so it doesn't move when I'm pouring the the cream into here, okay? It makes it a little bit easier. If you have some extra hands in the kitchen and somebody can hold that bowl for you while you do that, fantastic. I don't have that today. All right, our cream is ready. I'm gonna shut off my burner and 
We're gonna drizzle this in really slowly as an extra precaution to make sure that you don't curdle your eggs is to make sure you use cold eggs right from the fridge, okay? As colder the better, gives you extra protection. But regardless, this cream is almost at boiling. It's really hot. So you wanna drizzle in really slow. And this is called tempering the eggs. We're gonna make sure that they just rise in temperature very slowly. So we're just gonna drizzle it in very slowly and be very thorough in our mixing. Very slow at first, because remember you're introducing really, really hot cream. And as the egg yolks start to become warmer, we can drizzle it in a little bit faster. The next step, we're gonna stir in a little bit of vanilla. And then we're gonna take that now and we're going to strain it. So I got a nice fine wire mesh strainer. And the reason why you take this extra step is just in case you happen to curdle a little bit of the egg, this is gonna catch it, okay? So this is your safeguard. Pour it through that strainer. All right, it's looking pretty good. If you look there, we have no solid egg chunks in there. So we did really well. But again, just a safeguard. Let's take our ramekins in our baking dish and we're now just going to pour this mixture equally into the ramekins. Now, when you're getting the hot water in your baking dish, a really good tip is to make sure you take your baking dish close to your oven door. So you're not carrying it, trying to balance with really hot water. You're gonna end up spilling it on your feet. We'll take our water now and we're going to Fill the baking dish just until the water comes about halfway or a little past halfway of the ramekins. This will help cook them more evenly. And in the oven we go. If you're following the recipe online, you're going to want to bake at 325 degrees for about 30 to 35 minutes. I times this by one and a half. So I'm going to go almost an hour, okay, 55 to 60 minutes. And what you're looking for is to have them set, but still just a little jiggly. But follow that time frame at 325, 30 to 35 minutes for the half cup ramekins or 55 minutes to an hour for the one cup ramekins. If you go for the one cups, like I'm doing, if you find you're getting a bit too brown on top before they're done, you can always take a bit of tin foil and just place it over top to help protect the tops of the custards. But you really don't have to do that because remember in the end, creme brulee, we're gonna spoon on some sugar on there and caramelize it with a torch. So it doesn't really matter if it's too brown or not. As long as you have that hot water around there, cooking in a bain marie, it's gonna protect those custards. When they come out, you wanna make sure you cool them on a rack, get them out of the water so they can stop cooking, put them on a rack, let them sit at room temperature for a little bit, and then transfer those to the refrigerator and chill them for at least a couple hours, but best overnight. All right, we have them chilled, beautiful little custards. And here's where we're gonna do the next step. You wanna take about one to one and a half teaspoons of that white granulated sugar and just put it on top evenly. And then we're gonna torch it and it's gonna make a nice crisp caramel crust. You wanna make sure it's brown, but not black. Okay, you're gonna get a little bit of black around the edges and stuff. It's good to have a little culinary torch in the kitchen. It's gonna smoke a little bit like that. Just let it cool. And what that does creates that hard crust, but you have to let it sit. So you could take it right now and you could put it in the refrigerator for about a couple hours. So you're not doing this part until you're about to serve it. Put all the sugar in all the ones that you're going to serve, take the torch to it, and then let it sit for about five minutes or put it in the refrigerator for up to two hours. If you're planning to have your dessert longer than two hours, I would wait to do this part with the sugar. Remember, although this is an extravagant dessert, BC eggs are very healthy for you. I mean, we're talking six grams per egg of the highest quality protein you can get. 14 key nutrients and all nine essential amino acids in every single egg. So if you haven't got BC eggs in your diet, you're missing out, you really are. So it sat here for a little bit. Listen to this. Hear that? It's a solid crust. Now you dive into it and you break it like that and you spoon some out. And even though this is only a handful of ingredients, it tastes incredible. You're gonna wanna make this and it's so easy. This is Chef Dez signing out from BC Egg. Check out bcegg.com for a whole bunch of great recipes, tips and tricks. Where are you getting your protein from? Mmm.